As adults, we are in a constant process of evolution and change. Our personalities remain the same, but we are ever expanding in our use of language and learning new language, our use of movement by maybe taking a yoga class or learning a new sport. We can come to a deeper understanding of culture through travel. Just as the absorbent mind and the sensitive periods were this driving developmental energy for the young child, the human tendencies are the driving developmental energy for the adult. Human tendencies are active from the moment of birth for our entire life. It's important to understand the nature of the human. And it's through this understanding of who we are that we can really deeply serve the child. Mario Montessori wrote about the human tendencies in a pamphlet by the same name. Maria Montessori mentioned some human tendencies in her writings, but she never wrote about them specifically. Mario Montessori says that it's the human tendencies that allow us to so easily adapt to wherever we are in whatever situation that we come across. Human tendencies are universal and unchanging. They are rooted in those needs for shelter and food and clothing. And because they are rooted in those needs, they motivate behaviors. Human tendencies are also interrelated, and you're going to see that one tendency generally leads to the next. They are also manifested differently for every single human being. Exploration is the human's need to understand their surroundings. The early humans explored. They had to explore to find safe shelter, to find food. Our children are natural explorers. They need to understand their environments and the only way they're going to do this is through this exploration of their classroom, of their home, of their playground, of wherever it is they happen to exist in. Orientation is our awareness of where we are in an environment or in a situation. Early humans, once they had explored and found shelter, had to orient themselves to their surroundings. Where was the water? Where was the food source? Where was a good vantage point to look for danger? Children also have a need to orient. They need to orient themselves to time of day. I wake up and then I have breakfast. When the sun goes down, I go to sleep. They also orient themselves, let's say, to the classroom. Specifically, they're orienting themselves to where is the bathroom? Where is the water? Where do I find snack? Their basic needs. Order is how we make sense of what we experience and what we know. Early humans had explored. They had oriented themselves to their environment. Now they had to make sense of it all. I wake up. I make a fire. I find water, I find food. They began to see the order in the environment around them, that the night always followed the day, that the warm thaw always followed the winter freeze. Children have a sensitive period for order. There is an enormous amount of sensory information that is coming into their mind and they have to have a way to sort it all out. They are classifying, categorizing, compartmentalizing information. They're coming to understand their environment by the order they see within it. The sensitive period for order is helping them to create an orderly mind. Activity, work, and manipulation. We have a need to use our mind and our hands in our environment. And early humans did this too. They engaged in work and manipulation to create tools, to find ways to hold water so they didn't have to go get water so often. Their work allowed them to live a more comfortable life. Children have a need to work and to manipulate. This is how they are taking in the information that's growing their intelligence. Repetition is something that happens when we want to do something well. 
Early humans engaged in repetition. They did not create the tool that they needed on the first try. They did not find an effective way to hunt on the first try. It took many, many times trying things new, repeating those actions until they found a way that worked. Children engage in spontaneous repetition. And when we see this, it's a signal that there is self-construction happening, that there is a developmental need that's being satisfied. And children will repeat over and over until some level of internal satisfaction has been achieved. Exactness and precision is being meticulous and precise in what we do. This is a natural byproduct of repetition. And we know that early humans were repeating and becoming more efficient at the tasks that they had set out to do. Children also demonstrate this. And we can think about the first intentional grasp of the child when they reach and make contact with an object. That exact moment that precision in their movement is remembered. When they're learning to feed themselves and they're holding the spoon, they feed more of their cheek than they do their mouth. But through the repetition, they become more exact in that movement and more efficient at feeding themselves.